Terry, you're, you're the one, you, you're here for the duration, right? You love the show, you're gonna stay if it keeps on going seven years, nine years. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> tell us, tell us why. <laughs> why? Why, because some of the other women are I like. I don't know why would I want to keep a job oh. that I love <laughs> and a character that I love with people that I love. I, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know what, it, 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 I agree, but. By the way, don't you have to tell her what they did beforehand with the camera? Oh. <laughs> what? Why? Why did you well, you know, <laughs> is this where I get voted off the island? No, right, right. <laughs> is that? Very, there's a little surprise. Well, I think because you're naked, known for your comedy in the show, they chose to treat the audience to a little um, clip before uh, the presentation started tonight, and they showed you dancing around as one of the Love Boat mermaids. Oh. With your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with your. And they showed the whole dance. You know, it was. Wow. Like and four how minutes. How was that for you guys? <laughs> 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 you know, it does a lot of things. It, thank you very much. Completely accurately ages me. I appreciate that. You look great. You look and, the same, uh, except the no, hair. But, but honestly, it's, um, you know, when I, I'm far enough away from all that, that stuff to, to feel like how grateful I am to have survived in this business for that long. I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of ups and downs, a lot of... A lot of amazing people over the years I've worked with in movies and television, just amazing, amazing, incredible moments. And, you know, it all started with The Love Boat. How silly is that? Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> well, I agree, it seems like a crazy question, but Eva what? and Marsha and Felicity have all said that they have to see. I mean, Mark, you're gonna be on board through season seven full time and then look at it uh, for the next couple of years. And the rest of the cast isn't sure if they wanna continue once Mark's not there day to day. So I mean, Eva, do you can you see yourself staying there for indefinitely? Yeah, no. My my reservations about carrying on the show is if Mark was was going to be spearing that uh, right the last two years. Yeah, because I don't want. It's really you know, Mark touches every word of every script. I mean, there's not he's on set every day. We rehearse our scenes with Mark there. Um, so to think of a, another person doing that and touching those words. It's like, right, even, everybody always asks me, do you ever suggest uh, storylines to Mark? And I said, no, not really. I mean, I just open the script and I read what's on the page because- Usually I, two minutes before they start shooting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Usually, that's true. Not even during rehearsal. Uh, no. I just, I just she say puts her Blackberry you. down, tells the people to hold, and then <laughs> shoot the scene, and then they say no. cut, and she picks it, and she says, where were they? Okay. Eva Longoria is the most astounding cold reader in show business, <laughs> and my writing staff is so enraptured of her because she will open up the script, and she, she won't know where the story is going, so she'll read the dialogue, it's hysterical, and then she'll go, ha! <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, that's the joke. I'm glad you like it, Eva. <laughs> I do that all the time. I go, I read them and I go, that is funny. <laughs> Mark, you are good. But no, so my thing was, um, you know, so, so right now I feel like nobody knows Gabrielle better than Mark. I don't even know Gabrielle better than Mark. Right. So to have somebody else come in and say, this is what she should do, this is how she should be, I, I, I get really territorial and, and weird. I guess I feel um, like, you know, I, I'm, that's all true, what she said about Mark and his hand on everything and, and how great that's been for all of our individual characters. But I also... I know that Mark is, you know, he works himself to death. Like, I mean, you should know that. He works a gazillion hours a day, as do all the writers. Um, and I get that he might want a break, you know, and might, uh, and I feel like, I feel like Mark can pass it on to someone that he works with and it would still maintain, you know, the level or, or even, you know, be different. It's, that's the thing. I, I guess I'm not so married to that there's only one way to tell a story. And maybe it doesn't mean it's better or worse, it just means it's different. And so I sort of, I guess I feel like I trust Mark in the in the journey of wherever well, it goes. And, and the journey that we've had, for those of you who have stuck and with the And Eva doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the difference. Why, no. why do you think I made her fat at the beginning of the season? Um, <laughs> I'll teach you. I'll um, teach <laughs> no, here's the thing. Um, for those of you who have stuck with the journey, you know, I, I, you know, I was just a writer in my home. I was broke. I didn't have a job. No one wanted to hire me, and I was writing a script that I had some belief in. But uh, when ABC picked it up, I was put into the position of being an executive producer, and I'd only worked on sitcoms. And running an hour-long one-camera show is a completely different animal, and I really learned a lot. And I was very lucky that first season. So many of my choices were correct, and they worked. Then season two happened. And ABC had asked for more episodes than we had done the previous season, um, two more. And uh, I didn't know 
how I, I had forgotten how much I had already planned. So suddenly I didn't plan out the season as well because I hadn't been broke and unemployed in my home just thinking about what I could do with these characters. And I had fewer weeks to do it. And season two, I had a lot of problems because I hadn't thought things through. We were writing on the fly. Things weren't working. New characters weren't working. It was a very difficult time. And that's actually the season where I learned my job. And so starting in season three, one of the decisions I made was to bring Bob Daly along, who I'd worked with just very limited. And if this show is good right now, it's because Bob came and helped me. <laughs> and, and truly, what I've been doing over the past few years, um, I get a lot of the credit. But you know, Bob is the one. He's, um, he's my Jiminy Cricket who says, oh, don't do that. That's trashy. <laughs> um, or or you know, he, he uh, is the guy I mount stuff off of. And of course, we have a, a, an entire writing staff who all contribute mightily to it. Um, and while uh, I'm doing much more in terms of doing the overview, the truth is, you know, I'll, I'll leave the room to go do editing or something. I'll come back, and Bob and the writers will have a scene, and they'll do it. And I, you know, I might so have just the So there goes your thing. theory. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and, I, and certainly, certainly, I, I have an a, enormous amount of impact um, on, on everything because I'm kind of a little bit of a control freak. But what's great is I went and got some people who who could, you know, let me have a lunch break occasionally or whatever. And Bob is Bob is the unsung hero of the show, and I'm very grateful that he's here. And we here. do have, as Mark said, we have nine fantastic writers who are not here, but but who contribute. Mm. In a huge way to everyone.